Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Let's go over the auto deploy process step by step here. So we have an ESXi host that doesn't have any disks in it. We have a PXE compatible NIC in the host that's connected to a switch. We have a DHCP and DNS server. Normally this is also a domain controller. And then we have our vCenter server. And on our vCenter server, we can have the auto deploy service and the TFTP server. Now the auto deploy service and the TFTP server can actually be on separate hosts. So for simplicity, I'm putting them on the same host, but we could have another TFTP server up here and a separate auto deploy server as well. So when this ESXi host boots up, the PXE compatible NIC is going to look for an IP address. It's going to ask a DHCP server, hey, you got an IP address for me? The DHCP server is going to send that IP address to the ESXi host. And what we're actually going to do is create a reservation on the DHCP server so that the DHCP server hands out a specific IP address to this specific ESXi host. It's also going to hand out option 66 and 67 for DHCP, which tells it where to find the TFTP server and what file to look for on the TFTP server. So when it sends that information to the ESXi host, it now has an IP address and knows where to find the TFTP server. So it's on the network. So it tries to download that TFTP or that file via TFTP from this server. It's actually a tramp file. The TRAMP is the name of the file. That file tells it where to find the auto deploy service. So it successfully downloads that file. Now it knows where to find the auto deploy service and what path to go to contacts the auto deploy service. The auto deploy service has rules, deployment rules that say, okay, if this server that's requesting information meets certain criteria, then we want to apply this ESXi image. If it does not meet that criteria, then basically do nothing. So this server, if it meets the criteria, gets sent back an ESXi image to install and load into memory. So it does that, it gets the image, loads it into memory, then it tries to configure its host name and get an IP address for the host. Again, it contacts DHCP to get an IP address, which is normally the same one it got initially, and it does a reverse lookup on that IP address in DNS to figure out its host name. So now it has its host name. And part of the deployment rule on auto deploy is going to specify if it's added to a specific cluster in vCenter or not and also what host profile to apply. So the deployment rule then adds this host to maybe a specific cluster and specifies a specific host profile that is then applied to this ESXi host and that does the rest of the configuration like networking, storage any other configurations with this host and then it's taken out of maintenance mode and automatically put into production where it's supposed to be and configured the way we want it via the host profile. So it's up and running, everything's running in memory, it's working, it can run virtual machines at this point. Now what about if we reboot this host? Well it starts that whole process over because remember it doesn't have any persistent storage so boots to the PXE compatible NIC, gets an IP address from DHCP, and reapplies the image, reapplies the host profile, so the whole process repeats itself every time we reboot this ESXi host. So the idea is we wouldn't have just one of these hosts, we'd have many ESXi hosts, and they would all use the same process to get the image applied and have the host profile applied to be basically put in production and configured the way we want it. Now one thing I want to note is that these components are necessary for auto deploy to work. So if we think about it, if we've got some of them virtualized and we have a situation where let's say we lose power and all the servers go down, well when the ESXi host boots up, if these are virtualized, they're on an ESXi host that can't get configured because the uh, DHCP service, you know, is 
is virtualized that's on an ESXi host, well, that's not up yet because an image hasn't been applied. So it needs these services. So we would want to make sure that these particular services, if they're virtualized, are on a ESXi server that has persistent storage. So basically that ESXi server comes up, loads the operating system from disk, powers on these virtual machines, and then the rest of the ESXi hosts are able to be installed and configured via auto-deploy.